We're getting ready for a 350-ish mile trip on my Sea Dory 22 Cruiser. That is by far the longest trip that I've done on her. But how does one ready themselves for a trip like that? That's what I'm gonna share with you in this video as we delve into the meticulous planning that it takes to pull off such an epic voyage, or hopefully pull off. We're going to be starting as far upstream on the St. Johns River as we dare, running the entire river to the Atlantic, then turning south to follow the coast back down within about 13 miles from where we started. So through detailed planning, boat maintenance, and strategic packing, we're not just planning for a trip. We're setting the stage for an epic journey that I'm sure is gonna be just as challenging as it is breathtaking. This is my beloved Sea Doy. She is a lightweight and shallow draft boat. This makes her fuel efficient and she can explore really shallow waters, which I love. However, every boat design is a trade-off and she isn't the best in rough water. But if you slow her down a bit, she can handle a lot. I previously calculated that we can get about five miles per gallon cruising between 15 and 20 miles an hour. She holds about 48 gallons of fuel in these two tanks, so our max range would be about 240-ish miles. So I'll need to find a spot to fill up near the, I don't know, 180 or 200 mile mark. My plan is to stay at anchor pretty much every night, and the cabin has, I'd say, generous accommodations, especially for one person. We also have solar panels on the roof to keep my electrical system charged, and I'll have my refrigerator in here to keep all my hmm, perishables fresh. Since this is the beginning of the season and we have this big trip, I figured I'd take the boat up to my father-in-law's outboard shop and give her a good servicing. But the first thing I'm gonna do is start draining the lower unit oil. <coughs> That could take a while to drain, so I'm gonna let gravity do that for me, and I'm gonna go ahead and get started with some other things. First, I'm gonna get the cowling off so I can start removing the engine oil with a vacuum device. Oh yeah, seamless plug, <laughs> Dothan outboard if you're ever in the area. Here, I'm inserting a vacuum line into the engine, I'm trying to get it all the way to the bottom before I hook it to this pump, and I start to actually suck the oil out. Especially if they're full oil drive. That can also take a little while to do, so I'm going to go ahead and start removing some of these covers here so I can get to some more components on the engine. Since this is a fairly new engine, this is her first service, the spark plugs probably do not need replacing yet, so I'm just going to take one out and check it and see how it looks. Well, according to my father-in-law, who is an awesome expert, it looked good. Next up is to change out the fuel filter. I try to do this very carefully and then replace it with the same fuel filter. Looks like our vacuum pump has got just about all the oil out. That's quite a bit. I think it was four and a half quarts with the filter. Also, our lower unit is done draining, so I'm gonna hook up this pump to the bottom port and I'm going to pump in the foot oil from the bottom until I see it come out the top here. That lets me know that it's full. <clears throat> of course, we're changing the oil filter. That always needs to be done every time you change the oil. But then I'm gonna go up on the top of the motor and I'm going to inspect and replace a thermostat. This is an important part because if this fails, your engine is pretty much toast. Mine looks pretty good. Then I'm going to fill her back up with fresh oil and I'm going to be careful not to overfill it. And I actually would get it almost to the mark and then fill a little more, check again. I did that a few times to get it just right. Here you can see I'm removing some of the bolts that hold the lower unit on. Now I'm not actually replacing the water pump or the impeller for this service, that'll probably be next year. But what I'm actually doing, I am going to just put some anti-seize on these bolts because in Yamahas they are known to bind up sometimes and I'm doing it to all seven of the bolts. Now there's one that is hidden right under that trim tab. I'll also be changing the water fuel separator and I'm happy to see this rusty thing go. And I'll be greasing my wheel bearings before setting off as I normally do, plus I'll carry at least one extra hub kit and tools with me just in case. Maintenance isn't something you want to put off and you want things done right. Plus, doing this gives me peace of mind for the trip and if we have some sort of failure, I'll be less likely to blame myself for it. 
With the work of prepping and filming, I'm not gonna forget my daily packet of Element, and I must thank them for sponsoring another video and being a big supporter of my health and the channel. I start drinking my Element in the mornings to get a boost on my mental clarity, and it primes my body for my workout, which typically is around noon. It's better to pre-plan your electrolytes rather than trying to replenish them after a workout or a long day. What I like most about Element is that it's a satisfying drink that is healthy and a great replacement for something unhealthy you're already buying. It only makes sense to choose it over something with ingredients we know aren't doing our body any favors. Now, Element is made with simple ingredients and only the stuff our body needs, not the junk. 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. So right now, Element is offering a free sample 8-pack with any order if you go through my link, drinklmnt.com slash tripsmith. My suggestion to you is grab a 30-pack of citrus salt and get the sampler pack. Then next month, you can try your favorite flavor and get another sampler pack. There's no doubt this is quite a route to plan. And in the past, I've done this myself manually using Google Earth and just kind of drawing the lines. You guys have seen, I made a video about it years ago on how I do that. Well, it's, it's time consuming. Well, recently I was introduced to a newish app called Argo and it has made things a lot easier and it has some other cool little features that I think you guys will enjoy. Here I am on the desktop version of Argo getting ready to create my route. First, I choose my intended starting point, then my ending point, and give it a few seconds to let it generate the route. It doesn't take long, and it's got it, and after looking at it closely, it's a very good track with some other helpful information as well. Now, I can save this route to my captain's log for when I'm out on the water. Now, you can see Argo has the estimated distance, estimated travel time, and fuel usage. Now, it was able to do that because I put my boat information into the app, like speed and fuel consumption. Now, that is pretty cool. So when I get out on the water, I can pull up the route on my phone or my tablet and navigate with them like I'm using a chart plotter. I do like that I can utilize different layers like satellite imagery and NOAA charts. Now for you guys, you can download Argo, create a free account, and I think you can actually see where I am on the water, like when I'm actually out there. Now you can add me as a friend, send messages, see my routes, my voyage, and favorite places and more. Now this is something I'm pretty excited to explore, so hop on and add me. I figure I'm gonna stretch the trip out maybe over like six or seven days. That's my total drive time down, which is several hours, and then shuttling my truck and trailer, and of course drive time back. And that's with me stopping and exploring a few places that I think are gonna be interesting. So I'm gonna use my fridge to store most of my fresh meat that I'll be either pre-cooking or cooking while I'm on the boat. But then I'll also be snacking on some various jerky and of course my sardines every day. But then something very special that I have that I'm super, super, I'm excited about it, a little worried about it, but it is some seal meat that was given to me by a friend or a family, I should say. Uh, I think this was shot uh, up in Newfoundland, I think is right, like off the ice flows, and then it was preserved in a jar. This is crazy. I'm pretty excited about trying this. <laughs> For drinking water, I'm estimating about a gallon per day, and I'm probably going to bring maybe an extra gallon, but not too much extra because I don't want to over-provision because I want to try to keep the weight on the boat as low as possible, but still I want to bring enough stuff. I don't want to, you know, hold back too much, but I just want to be uh, mindful of that because that's going to help with my efficiency and things like that. Of course, I do have my butane stove on board that I'll use to cook up something fresh, maybe some sausage or maybe a fish if we get lucky and catch one. And I have another snack that I'll be bringing along. It's new to me. These little gym, I don't know what to call them, maybe multivitamin energy chews type things. But I'm on like day five and they're pretty interesting. I'll be bringing those along too. Here in my gear closet, I have a plethora of other small pieces of gear that I will be carrying along, and I'll be checking off my Sea Dory overnight packing list. That always helps me not to forget uh, too many things. But you guys know, even with this list, there seems there's always something that I forget. That just adds a little more excitement. <laughs> Clothing's gonna be pretty simple. I'll pack for mostly mild weather, shorts, t-shirts, a few long sleeves for sun protection, a pair of pants, and of course, my rain jacket. And I might even toss in a pair of socks and maybe a pair of underwear, just in case. Sun protection is pretty simple. I'll have my buff, a couple of hats, 
and some sunblock, very important. I like the ginger armor. I've been using this stuff a lot lately when I work like for boat test and spend a lot of time in the sun. Ginger armor, it's rocking. Then when it comes to footwear, of course I'll have, oh, I can't get that high. That's really high. How can I do this? I'll have my earth runners. I'll have my earth runners. Woo! And my astral water shoes. It's always smart to double check your safety equipment. So in my cockpit, I have my throwable. And just inside the cabin, underneath this SETI or seat, I have my PFDs. Just above the cabin door is my fire extinguisher, which is good. Right under the helm is where I keep the rest of my safety equipment, which consists of a bag with a bad zipper, but whatever. So you need a nighttime and daytime distress signal. Here's my daytime signal with a float, blah, blah, blah. So this will constitute as flares. But I also have flares. Granted, these are expired. They still work. Also a flare gun with more expired flares, but these expired in 2023, so only a year ago. And then a daytime signal. I have this big plastic thing. Da, 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 da. Do I have a smoke flare too? Probably not. No. We're okay. We are still legal. Because <laughs> technically I think this works daytime or nighttime. But also under here, I have my Angler Aid first aid kit. And also a sound producing device, which I have on multiple PFDs down there. This trip isn't just about miles, but it's about what lies along those miles. So I'll need to plan out a few interesting stops. The first leg of our journey has some springs we can stop at and explore. Definitely can't miss them. Some of them I've been to before on my skiff, and it might be a good spot to drop the anchor for the night. Around Jacksonville, there'll be commercial ports, cruise ship ports, and a naval base that would be interesting to check out. I've been by the one in Norfolk, Virginia before, and it was very impressive. I always get excited seeing the big commercial boats operating and putting around them in my little tiny yacht. Once we get out of the river and make our way south along the coast, we'll come to St. Augustine, the oldest city in America. They have a pirate museum and a museum of sunken ships that I hope to be able to visit. But I'm not sure if I can find a spot for the boat while I'm ashore, but it's worth a try. Now moving farther south through the intracoastal waterway, we pass by various inlets and I'm hoping one or two of them will be beautiful and we can stop and enjoy some cool water and beautiful beaches. As we get closer to the end of our journey, we'll be entering the Canaveral National Seashore. Maybe we'll get lucky and see a rocket launch. A SpaceX Falcon 9 launch is to be determined for April, so keep your fingers crossed. Granted, there are many more places that I'd love to stop, but I only have so much time, and I'm trying to make the best of the time that I have. If you have any other suggestions of places that I definitely don't need to miss, let me know in the comments. I would really like to hear them because I don't know this area very well. Some of the final checks I'll make are weather and then the water levels on the St. Johns River to be sure I have enough water to navigate because I am starting as far upstream as I can. And luckily one of you good folks have been helping me quite a bit with the St. Johns River section. Actually, he's the one who suggested this loop trip in the first place. Thank you, Colby. Is it Colby Wall? W-H-A-L. Thank you, man. The trip will be a go unless there's a major storm. A little rain won't be stopping us and I just put new wiper blades on the boat anyhow. I'll be leaving a float plane with my family in case things do go sour and I also have on the water towing with my progressive insurance policy on the boat. Plus, I'll have you guys following along on the Argo app and my Instagram story, plus maybe a few live streams on YouTube. Other than that, I think we should be ready for an amazing adventure. I hope you guys are looking forward to it as much as I am. See ya. Love you. God bless.